Hey everybody, this is Kerstin here. Thank you so much for joining me on this new episode of the Balanced Vibes podcast. Today, I'm going to get started with the mini series where I'm going to talk about the reverse diet. So this is going to be a three-part mini series and we are going to cover a lot of the questions that you have ever asked about reverse dieting. I'm going to clear up a lot of confusion. So some of the topics we're going to talk about are what is a reverse diet? Who needs it? How do you know that you need it? How does the process look like? And what kind of results can you get from it? And also, what are you going to do after the re reverse diet is done? So these are the topics that we are going to cover over the course of next three podcast episodes. Before I dive into the first topic, which will be what is the reverse diet and who needs it and what happens when we do it? I wanted to let you know that my reverse diet course, DIY, meaning do-it-yourself course called Metabolic Reset is on sale until January 15th. And this week is my birthday week, and I'm going to knock off 38% of the regular price of the course. If you want to do this, if you are listening to this podcast and you know that you need a reverse diet, then you should absolutely get this program. People who have done this have gotten amazing results. And this is honestly the closest you can get to my one-on-one -on -one coaching. But of course, the cost is going to be way lower because you're going to do this yourself. So go ahead and check out the link to my metabolic reset program. And if you know that you need a reverse diet or after listening to these three podcasts, you realize that absolutely for sure, I need this, then I know that you need this program. And I am very, very confident that it will help you. That's why I'm recommending it. So remember that this offer is good until January 15th, which will be Sunday. And then the price will go up uh, to its regular uh, price again. So let's get started then. Uh, talking about the reverse diet, what it is and who needs it. And this is what we're going to cover in this first part uh, of this mini series. So before we even talk about what exactly reverse diet is and who needs it, we have to first take a look at what happens when we diet a lot, because a lot of people do that Sometimes it happens even unintentionally. Sometimes people don't even realize that they are under eating, but more often than not, than not, we do realize and we under eat for a long period of time. We diet and diet and diet and diet, hoping to lose weight until we eventually get to the point where the weight is just not going down anymore because we are just really over dieted. So what happens when we go on a diet and when we start cutting our calories, like I said, whether it happens intentionally or unintentionally? So a couple of things I want to mention here. Well, actually, there's more than a couple. There's 10 things I want to mention here. First of all, what happens to our thyroid hormone is that it goes down. So if you have always struggled with thyroid, you're saying that my T3 is low. I don't know why that is. And maybe you're even on medication for it. Then there's a good chance that if you have been dieting a lot in your life, then that is the reason why your T3 is low. Your thyroid hormones are low. So don't, uh, of course... Stop taking your medicine if you are on medication for it. Absolutely listen to your doctor. But know that if you have been chronically dieting, always under eating, and you have problems with your thyroid, then this is absolutely one of the reasons why your thyroid is not getting better. So you have just been under eating. And when we under eat, then our th thyroid, uh, which is like a thermostat of our metabolism, starts to slow down. So this is the first thing. The second thing that happens is that our cortisol will go up. So cortisol, of course, is stress hormone, and one of the stress hormones. And we have talked about it on this podcast quite a bit. So uh, cortisol is associated with a lot of stress. And where does that stress come from? Well, it can come from so many different places. But because we're talking about a diet here today, then our diet, of course, is also big, can be a big source of, you know, big reason why our cortisol goes up. Very, very common reasons are eating low calories because that will send our body a signal that there's danger, right? The body's not feeling safe and the cortisol will go up. Uh, also very common reasons are eating low carb diets and also eating um, in a way where you fast for many, many hours a day. Something very common lately that I see all the time is 16 plus hours a day. So extending those fasts way, way too uh, long will absolutely increase your cortisol. And talking about working out, very intense workouts, 
to long workouts, a lot of uh, cardio workouts. They are also known to increase your core. And of course, you can overdo strength training as well. So we have to be mindful of that as well. But usually when we're dealing with very intense workouts, so doing lots of like uh, high intensity workouts and cardio uh, and Orange Theory and spin classes and intense boot camps and all that, then these also don't help your cortisol. So as a result of low calorie eating, being in a chronic uh, deficit all the time, and then adding those intense workouts, then that will then mean that your cortisol will go up. The next thing that we want to talk about when we are in a calorie deficit and dieting all the time is that our testosterone will go down. So uh, we don't want that. Of course, you probably know that also women have testosterone, although this is mainly associated with men, right? But women need testosterone also. You need it for for just um, uh, for for a sex drive, for your libido. You need it for just to feel that drive, that energy. So these are the common things. If you feel kind of like low and slow and are not excited about anything, you have no libido, then these are often signs that your testosterone might be too low. The next thing that you start noticing when you are chronically uh, under eating and chronically dieting is that your mood will be pretty bad. You may have a lot of mood swings. At one moment you're happy, then you're feeling low or you're feeling like low all the time. The next thing is that your cognitive function is not that great. Maybe you forget things. Um, maybe you just uh, can't, you just don't feel like, you know, you can find words. You feel like you cannot learn new things. Your memory isn't exactly what it used to be. You feel like you are always in a constant brain fog state. So this is a common sign too, that you have spent too much time in a calorie deficit. You are just over dieted. The next thing that will happen if we are always dieting is that our muscle breakdown starts to happen fast. So if you are somebody who wants to put on muscle, which I always encourage that you do, but you're not able to, and you're wondering why, even though you might be lifting weights, if you're always in a calorie deficit and always dieting, then you will not get those muscle gains because your body starts to break down its own tissue, especially if the deficit has been too dramatic, too big, and lasted for too long, then and you will start experiencing muscle breakdown. The next thing that you may find is that your immunity is low. You may get sick very often. Uh, you just don't have the same strength uh, anymore to fight off, you know, whatever is going around. You just pick everything up. You you get colds all the time and so on. And that can also be a sign um, that your, you know, metabolic rate has slowed down. Your ability to fight disease has gone gone down, which can often be a result of being in a calorie deficit for way too long. You may also notice that your sleep isn't what it used to be. You either wake up a lot, you're not able to go to sleep, or you wake up and you are never rested. You may find that your libido is low. We actually already talked about it. And you also may start noticing things like you're losing your hair, your skin is kind of dry, maybe itchy. You may notice that your nails are kind of weak. So all of these are signs that you probably have spent too much time in a calorie deficit. So if this happened, you know, you don't have to have all of these signs, but if you have at least some of them and you know that you have been dieting all the time or you're always trying to lose weight or you're jumping from one diet to the next, always keeping your calories low, or maybe you have like a temporary moment when you are binging, but then you go back to your low calorie eating. These are all uh, reasons, you know, why, or the signs that I just mentioned are all results of you being in a calorie deficit for too long. So a person like this who is experiencing all of these signs is a really good candidate for a reverse diet, right? So remember, we're talking about spending a lot of time in a calorie deficit. Sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's four months. Sometimes it can be a decade that a person has been in a calorie deficit, and the body is just sending you signs that, hey, we're not doing this anymore. I you know, I have to start breaking down my own tissue. I don't have the energy. I feel like crap. My thyroid is a mess. My cortisol is up all the time. You start getting those signs. You start feeling like I need more coffee to get going. Uh, I need to do intense work as to feel energized. So you never really feel balanced and normal anymore. And what a lot of people find is that what happens eventually is that they start gaining weight. So now next point I want to make here is who needs a reverse diet and the number one the biggest thing that um really stands out here is that typically a person who uh, has hit such plateau that you know uh, they're not 
able to change anything about their body. They may cut their calories more, they might do more workouts, but the body is just not changing. And this is a state of like really bad or pretty bad metabolic adaptation. Now your metabolism metabolism has adapted to that low calorie uh, amount that you are giving your body and it does not want to burn more. So no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do at the gym, no matter how low you cut your calories, your body has just become unresponsive. You just cannot change it. You have hit this rock bottom, so to speak, and I want to scare you because you can get out of it. And that's the whole point here. You can get out of it, but temporarily you may find yourself in a, in a place where you have hit such a rock bottom where nothing you're trying to do is giving you the results, even though they may have worked before. And this is a big one too, because let's say that now you're in your mid forties or mid fifties and you're thinking, well, it always used to work. Cutting more calories used to work for me. When I was in my twenties, all I had to do was to cut out chocolate for a couple of weeks and I lost weight really easily. Or I would add in a couple of runs uh, you know, in a week and I would lose weight easily. And the same thing doesn't happen anymore because now you are in your mid forties, in your mid fifties, you have been doing this for way too long and your body doesn't respond anymore because its metabolic rate is too low. Now, there are some other, um, you know, uh, occasions too, where a person might need a uh, reverse diet. Um, so I'm going to mention them, but I'm not going to focus on them uh, on this episode or in this series. And I want to mainly talk to the person who has now become unresponsive to all these changes that she's trying to make. But there are some other cases too. So for example, if you have had a fat loss goal, you have done this responsibly, which is how I do it with my clients. So you have uh, hormonally, you know, done a hormonally healthy fat loss, and now you have hit your goal. You have reached that uh, fat percentage or the look or the physique that you like. Then we have to increase your calories too. And the process of reverse dieting is actually similar. So we're going to uh, gradually and slowly start increasing your calories back to a place where you are now at maintenance. So this is one goal. The other goal, um, the other reason why you may want to do reverse diet is when you have hit a temporary plateau in your fat loss journey. Let's say that in four weeks, there hasn't been any change in your weight measurements or photos, then it might be a time to add a little bit of calories and see if that will get things going in the right direction because your metabolism has slowed a little bit and we need a little boost. And if you know, the third case is if somebody just needs a break, you know, they are hungry, they are in the middle of, let's say, fat loss phase, but they're like, I can't do this, I need a break, then we can also do a little a mini reverse dieting there. But like I said, in this series, I want to focus specifically on a person who has tried to lose weight for months and months, eating low calories, months and months, sometimes years and sometimes even decades, and is just not getting results anymore. Okay, so what does a reverse diet then look like? So we are going to start increasing your calories. And this is the freaking scary, oh my goodness, I cannot do this moment for most women. It's really scary. Um, I know it can be. And your biggest fear is probably, am I going to gain weight? How long do I have to do this? Well, these are all the both the topics that we're going to cover in the next episode that will come out in a couple of days. So absolutely stay tuned if you have these questions. How long is going to, uh, how long is it going to take? take and will I gain weight? But uh, for now, I want to make sure that you understand that this process is going to be gradual. So we will increase your calories gradually, because like I mentioned, if you find yourself in this rock bottom position where you are already eating, let's say 1400 calories, then you cannot cut any more from there. And you have to start gradually increasing your calorie intake to get, to get it to a healthy place, to get your metabolism healthy and responsive again. So we will start increasing your calories and we will increase your carbohydrates. Another scary thing for a lot of people, especially for those of us who have bought into this idea that the only thing we have to ever do to lose weight is to cut calories, sorry, to cut carbohydrates and you are resistant to, uh, to adding carbohydrates back into your diet. But you have to do this if you want to heal your metabolism and make it responsive again. So that now when you start to, after reverse diet, um, maybe you haven't, you actually want to lose lose body fat, now you're going to do this responsibly and you want to have a high metabolic rate where you can cut from. So like I said, gradual increase of calories and a lot of these calories are going to come from carbohydrates and what then happens as a result of implementing these changes? Well, your thyroid will upregulate and this is what always happens. Um, 
I'm not going to say, like I said before, to, you know, don't get off medication. If you're on medication, please, please, please understand, understand that. I am not a medical professional. I'm not recommending that. You always have to talk to your doctor. But I will say that your thyroid very likely will upregulate and will get much healthier and you will feel it because like I said earlier too, thyroid is the, is the thermostat of your metabolism. It, it goes up and it goes down based on what you are doing. You actually can change the change its state and when you start eating more fueling yourself better and we're not talking only about random calories just throw the stuff in and eat whatever i don't like that approach at all we have to talk about eating nutritious food of course there's always room a little bit of this and that you know snacks and little things i i have these things absolutely every single day myself too but i'm talking also about focusing on nutrient density right making sure that we are getting also good micronutrients then that will absolutely improve your thyroid health as well guaranteed it's just cannot not happen so another thing uh you will feel better um in your whole like cellular cellular level uh energy will be better your mood will be better uh, you will feel warmer by the way your body temperature will go up so if you're somebody who is always cold then this is also a sign that something might be up with your thyroid so you will start warm feeling warmer your skin is going to start feeling better now the hair loss if you are experiencing a lot of hair loss this can be something that will take time to come back to normal but you have to stay patient with it and in this in this case, um, I absolutely recommend that you look into using some uh, mineral drops as well, which will help to balance your mineral status in the body. Often get throws, thrown off as a result of chronic dieting. Well, to be honest, I actually recommend those mineral drops to almost everybody. I don't know that there's somebody who's like, I'm doing so well and I don't have any mineral deficiencies that I would say, no, you shouldn't take it. So I think for most people it is important, but if you're dealing with hair loss, then I absolutely would recommend that as well. And of course, your overall metabolic rate will increase, uh, will be higher when you now start eating more, when you do the reverse diet, and also when you slow down those intense workouts. Now, talking about workouts, there are people who, while they did chronic dieting, also hammered their bodies really hard with workouts. And then there are people who didn't do that, right? So they maybe didn't do anything at all. They were very sedentary. They just didn't eat at all. And maybe they had, you know, something happening in the family. They just forgot to eat. They were stressed out. They're depressed. They didn't work out and they just ate very little. So it can happen both ways, you know, in both cases, you will have to increase your uh, calorie intake and you will have to start doing some resistance training unless the body is so fatigued and so deprived that you're not ready for this. But most cases, I would say um, people can do resistance, resistance training and it will only benefit them during a reverse diet. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the next episode as well, because those people who do lift weights and have high muscle mass will have shorter duration to their reverse diet. They get to the other side of it a little bit faster. So, um, yeah, you just have to start slowly nourishing your body, giving it more nutrition and get over the fear that, oh my God, I cannot do this. This is going to be also awful. And you have to also only, uh, you know, stop focusing on the weight. You might be thinking, oh my goodness, am I going to put on a lot of weight? I cannot handle this. But let me tell you, if you are right now stuck in this place that I described, you are really over dieted and your body's not responding to any of those efforts that you're trying to do, then you have to do that reverse diet. It's just setting you up for a healthier fat loss later if you still have that goal. And that's why I call it actually the build-up phase. So in my client journey, I have three phases. First one I call the build-up phase. The second one I call the fat loss phase. And the last one I call it the forever phase. So I would say most people have to start from that build-up phase, which is essentially exactly the same as the reverse diet that I talked about it, but I think it it describes it a little bit better. We're building up your body and you shouldn't be afraid of those calorie increases. And let me tell you, I haven't had anybody tell me that I feel worse as a result of eating more calories. Everybody says that I'm actually feeling much better. My energy is higher. Uh, my mood is better. I don't have to think so much about food. I can have more food. My workouts are so much better fueled. So there are so many benefits to do Doing this reverse diet, especially if you know that you are the person who has been um, over over uh, dieted. So this is what I wanted to cover in uh, this first part of the episode. 
Uh, and the next one, we're going to talk about the duration of a typical reverse diet and also who will recover faster, who will get their metabolism built up faster and who's going to need a little bit more time. So make sure that you tune into that episode as well. And I want to remind you one more time that if you know that you are this person who needs this program, then my metabolic reset is on sale until January 15th. Make sure that you check out the link in the show notes and in the YouTube description as well. Well, if this is something that you're interested in, also check out the really amazing success stories that people have shared on that page as well. I hope that inspires you and helps you to start moving in the right direction. All right. This is all I wanted to share with you today. Stay tuned for the next part, part two of the series, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.